there, this is Seth Blake with the Arkansas FAA Safety Team. I'm a lead representative here in Arkansas, and one of my jobs is to teach people how to use this program called WINGS, which is a pilot proficiency program. If you're watching this video, it's probably because uh, you're interested in using the website, um, fasafety.gov. That's the main way that you interact with the program called WINGS. And... Uh, there will probably be another video. I don't, I'm don't. i not done with that yet. Usually I do a seminar on how Wings works, and then I reference people to this video. So that's kind of uh, how you ended up here probably. Uh, if you're just scrolling around YouTube interested on how uh, Wings works, well, luckily you're going to find out how the website works right now. So um, at the main website, faasafety.gov, this is where you're going to land. And if you've never created an account, I'm going to step you through that process real quick. So over here on the right, we're going to select create an account. Uh, this process is pretty straightforward. I made a new uh, email account, wings, uh, actually, yeah, wings at vsl.aero. Uh, so this is kind of just a test account that we're doing to show you how this works. This isn't a real person, uh, and don't worry, this uh, this isn't going to magically somehow create a pilot. I'm not I'm not uh, lying and creating a pilot out of thin air. We're just doing this for training purposes. So we're going to put that our pilot does not have a certificate, and uh, we can continue. Now that's interesting. You can create a Wings account without having uh, a pilot certificate. So even if you're just a student pilot, you can create this account and start using it. Uh, we're going to name it uh, Joe User. That's our pilot, and his uh, name's uh, going to be Joe on the website. That's his mother's maiden name. We have to answer all of these questions here for it to be a valid account. So we're just going to go through real quick and do that. And then we're going to type in uh, my zip code right now, 72802. That's at Russellville. Now we want this zip code to be accurate because uh, when we're searching for stuff in Wings, it's going to try to tailor our experience for uh, the, the website that we put here. So 72802 needs to be your home address. And then we're going to put, uh, we're interested in student pilot, private pilot, and commercial pilot. That's going to help uh, the Wings website create you uh, kind of a custom uh, appearance based on your interest or ratings. And we're going to hit continue. What it's going to do now is it sent us a uh, confirmation email with a password, a temporary password. So we're going to go to login, and we're going to go to Wings at VSL... Dot arrow. Our email address is going to be our username. And I'm going to look over here on another screen. All right, I found our confirmation email. So all the confirmation email is is it had a uh, temporary password in there. So we're going to hit go, and the first thing we should see is to create a new password. So I'm going to do that real quick. I just created a new password, and now I'm ready to log in. Um, so uh, now that we've logged in, we're, we're going to create our, our account preferences. So I'm going to go through this rather quickly. It's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but you're basically going to make a selection of your interests and your certificates. So when we build our Wings profile, we're going to say we're a single-engine, uh, airplane single-engine land, and we're commercial... Uh, private pilot is what we'll put on there. Instrument rating, sure. We're working on our instrument, commercial private pilot. A lot of pilots are doing that. And we're not going to put in a last uh, a date of last flight review. Now, if you have taken a check ride recently, you can put in your check ride as this date. And it's just a way for Wings to keep track of when you're due for your flight review. And then we do want to participate in the Wings program. Almost missed that step. And we hit save. All right, selection's been saved. Here's where we're going to put in our uh, certificates and ratings. We're just going to say we're a student pilot for now. Uh, and then we're going to go to seminar preferences, and I'm going to put in 72802 and 150 miles. That's kind of the, the distance I'm willing to travel to go to an in-person seminar. Uh, I can load in uh, two other zip codes there, or up to three zip codes and distances, you know, if you're, you're traveling at different airports. Uh, back to the Airman Registry. 
if you are an actual person creating this account, uh, you'll be able to uh, correlate that account with your uh, airman registry record, which is really important because you want to know, or you want the FAA to know that you are a participant in WINGS. So that way when they type in your certificate number, should you ever get some sort of uh, pilot deviation, let's say, they're going to be able to look up your WINGS profile right then and see if you're a participating member. If you are, the discussion that happens after some sort of pilot deviation or, uh, or, or violation, that conversation is going to sound a lot different if you're current in a phase of WINGS versus if you're not. So I would really highly encourage you to participate in WINGS uh, if for nothing else than the benefit of, of it giving you protection. Of course it's going to be uh, to make you a safer pilot, and that's that's really what we're worried about is we want you to be a proficient pilot, and that's what this is going to help with. But it's also kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card with the uh, FAA. Um, so we've, we've basically created our account here, and now we're ready to go to the main landing page. So this is what your main landing page is going to look like. You would log in right here. Notice the first picture that pops up in a contact list is your program manager for your state or your, the, the FISDO that you're underneath. So Heather Metzler is there. She's the FPM for uh, the Arkansas FISDO for the FAST team. And then Jamie Black is also our program manager. Um, so both of those people would be great point of contacts if I wanted to get more involved with my local wings um uh, community, I guess, or program, I could call either of those uh, people or uh, it would give me their email address as well. Uh, now, as a review of the website, that's not a very user-friendly website. That's the biggest complaint that we get from Wings users, and we totally understand that. It's not that user-friendly, uh, but it does work, and it is what we have now, so we kind of have to deal with it. So what we're going to do is first we're going to look at a way to look up courses which is one of the most valuable things you can do here on the Wings website. So we've got our courses here. Uh, we're going to go with these, this middle one, which is our available courses. These are all the Wings, the, the blue colored uh, box there. These are all the, the pilot-centric courses, and you can see that there are a ton of free courses right here. So we can just kind of pick one at random. Uh, to enroll in. So I, I chose avoiding loss of control. It has a course number of ALC 214 and I hit enroll. Uh, I can see it has an intro and only what? It's only one page? Well, if you click on page one, it's going to take you to an external link. Uh, there it is. And we're going to click on that file and that will actually take us to the website that hosts the uh, the course. So we can see that this course consists of 98 slides, so it's a fairly lengthy slide, and it looks like there's some sound playing in the background, so this is probably like a video lecture style uh, course that we're going to listen to, uh, take notes on, review, and then we're going to take an exam on that course. Once we've passed that exam, uh, then it gives us credit in wings for having completed that course. So that's how a basic course would go. Sometimes the whole course is hosted here on the wing, wing site. Sometimes it takes you to a third-party vendor of that course. There are also pay-for uh, courses or paid courses that are on there through uh, places like Sporties or, or King School. Um, but uh, there's several different ways you can get uh, course credit for um, online courses there. The next thing we have are seminars and webinars. Now, seminars are really cool. They're in-person events. There's usually 30 to 40 people there from the aviation community, and we'll cover some topic. Uh, you'll usually be a guest speaker where we'll, uh, we'll kind of have a lecture format or question and answer. We'll try to make it as interactive as, as possible. Um, but we'll have this event. Usually it's over dinner or lunch or something. And uh, we'll have some questions. It's a great time to kind of expand your aviation community and make connections and talk with other pilots in the community. It's They're, they're great things to go to. Uh, those seminars can be found here. If I wanted to look one up for my state, I could just simply click on my state, like Texas here. And I can scroll down and I can see, hey, on the 19th, uh, there's an EAA chapter meeting uh, looks like it's about uh, the winter flying season that's coming up. It's November 16th of 2021, so uh, very appropriate to have some, some live seminars on winter flying season. And so it looks like there's 32 seats remaining. If I wanted to find out more about this, I could just click on the event. It gives me the registration information, 
as well as how many points that it's going to be worth for the WINGS program. So that's an example of uh, a seminar and how I would look that up. Now, there's another thing called webinars, which are kind of separate from seminars. Obviously, they're not in person. They're live uh, on, on the web. So usually Zoom or go to meeting, some software like that where we're getting along. Here, being in 2021, uh, most everybody's accustomed to Zoom, so nothing exciting there. But we're going to click on Show Webinars Only. And the really cool thing about this is prior to COVID, there was almost no webinars. And then after COVID, there's webinars every day. I counted them up. There's nine webinars today. There's probably going to be 10 more tomorrow. But you can see the there's a huge list of webinars that are here. These are all free to attend to. Uh, it, it, some of them are, are, yeah, some of them might be dry, but there's a lot of them that are going to be great. And uh, it's worth 30 minutes of your time just jumping in on one of these webinars and seeing uh, some new perspectives you can learn. The neat thing is you can go to these webinars at, at other parts of the country. So instead of kind of getting that echo chamber effect of your lo own local or regional flying um, topics, you can kind of branch out and go to these webinars that are, that are hosted in other states and learn something new. So that's what uh, seminars and webinars are going to look like. The last thing we're going to cover is activities. Now, this is where most people get confused, or I have the most confusion on how do I request flight activities. Because remember, our WINGS program, in order to be phase complete, we need three ground topics and we need three flying topics. So the flight activities are the ones that are the hardest to find because they're just not as organized as the courses, webinars, and seminars. So there's really one of two ways that you can go about getting credit for a flight activity. You can either let your instructor give you credit um, after you've done the flight, or you can request credit uh, from your instructor or some other authorizing uh, person like a, a FAST team member. So we're, we're going to go with the second one of those, and I'm going to display that or demonstrate that first, and then I'm going to go into my account and show how you can give credit as an instructor. So if you're a student and you just went out and you did takeoffs and landings with your instructor and you would like wings credit from that and they tell you, well, go inside and request it and I'll approve it. So you're like, okay, great. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to select flight activities, wings, uh, and I'm going to do uh, takeoff. I'm, I'm going to search takeoff for flight one, two, or three. I'm going to try to make it broad but, but narrow it down. Hopefully the search function works search functions aren't that great uh, all right so already you know it's not this flight review it's not that and then I'm reading these uh, these headings here still don't see it here we go airplane single engine land a cell that's what that stands for so uh, a cell let's see if they have takeoffs boom right there a cell takeoffs landings and go arounds uh, advanced you know, notice I've got like three different options, four different options, five different options. Oh my gosh, I don't know which one to to do. So I, I'm really just gonna pick this one right here. I think that's that's the one that I want. I can click on it for more information. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, one credit for basic flight topic one. Hey, perfect. So I'm gonna request credit for that. Uh, I'm gonna say that I did this flight today, the 16th. And then I'm going to find a val notice. Uh, I'm going to find a validator in my zip code, which is already in there because I already loaded that in my profile. So I'm going to search. Uh, it should come up with my name. Sure enough, there's Seth Lake right there. I'm going to select Seth as my validator, and I'm going to submit that for validation. So Seth, my instructor, is going to get uh, an alert when he logs into his system that says, "Hey, uh, Joe User is wanting to get credit for the takeoffs and landings that you did today." So that's how I'm going to uh, request credit as a, uh, as a student. Now, if I want to check on my progress here, I can go to the, the home page, and I go down here to this little link called My Wings, and I can see, hey, I've, I've enrolled in one of three courses that I need to do, and I've requested uh, credit for one of three flight activities that I need to do. So I, I need to do two more ground activities and two more flight activities, and I'm going to be good to go. Or this is knowledge activities. I keep calling them ground activities, but you get the point. They're, they're done on the ground, um, but they're knowledge activities. 
So I am, you know, about a quarter of the way to phase one completion of wings. Now, once I complete all uh, six of these events, three flight, three ground, uh, I will get credit for a phase completion, and that counts for my flight review. I'll actually have a place where I can go in and print off uh, a flight review, and it even prints it off in little sticker size that I can put in the back of my logbook. It's really useful. Um, down here at the bottom is kind of a... a a visualization of all the credits. Now, if if I'd have been a Wings member, and you'll see this on my account when I log in here in a second, uh, it'll actually show you the events that you've done on the month that you've done them on because these reset every uh, 12 calendar months. So you want to make sure, you know, you can see, oh, last November I did a bunch of events and they're fixing to drop off, so I need to do some more events to take those place uh, to, to keep up my phases. Um, and I talk about the, the space stuff in my seminars on how Wings works. But um, again, this is just how the website works. So that's how we check in on our personal Wings progress. So now I'm going to log in as myself instead of this fake account. Okay. So now that I've logged in, um, I've got this red flag right here. And notice it says lead representative. That's me. Uh, I've got a red flag sitting there, and that's, that just means I have pending validation requests. Oh, well, look who it is, Joe User. Sure enough. So I'm going to click on Joe User's flight here, and I can say, yes, I conducted this training, accept it, and submit. And when I submit that, it's going to go in and show that uh, I've, I completed that flight activity. I'm not actually going to do that because uh, I don't want to give credit for a fake activity. <laughs> so back to homepage as an instructor. Another thing that I'm going to have access to now as an instructor is I can go to my instructor portal and I can give credit. So this is the first way that uh, you can give credit is is as the instructor, I can put in the flight activity number, associate it with your email address, and it'll automatically give you credit. So as an instructor, I keep a little notepad here on my desktop uh, as a DPE as well, because when I give a check ride, let's say I give a check ride to Joe User, and it's his initial private pilot. I can copy and paste that, and then I can search for uh, my pilot that I just gave the check ride to. So in this case, there's Joe right there. I'm going to go uh, next. I'm going to paste in that activity number for initial certification as a private pilot and hit search. And right there, I'm going to select that one. And I can put in the date. I can, uh, you know, this is my uh, promise, basically, that I've conducted the training certification, and I give credit for that. Uh, activity, and that will go into um, our our Joe users history as having completed uh, the flight activity associated with that. And uh, if you notice, that flight activity actually had all of the the ground and knowledge topics, so that would get you phase complete automatically if you did that. Now, the nice thing about doing this as an instructor is if I give fifteen flight activities to at least five different clients, I can use that to renew my CFI certificate. So the way I would do that is I would go to my instructor portal and I would go to list of credits validated. And I'm going to look at flight activities only for the past uh, 24 months. And here's my report of all of my flight activities given. So I can I can print this off. Really, I'd want to save it as a PDF document because I have quite a few. Uh, and I could turn that into a DPE or an, uh, a safety investigator at the uh, or safety inspector um, at the FISDO, and they would use that to renew my CFI. So I don't. I can use that to to get my CFI renewed. Uh, don't without having to do a FERC or without having to do endorsement activities. So uh, that's. A, a lesser known uh, benefit of wings participating in it as an instructor. The other thing I can do as an instructor is I can print somebody's checklist. So let's say I wanted to go fly with this Joe user guy. I would type in his email address 
and I would print his basic checklist. And here's Joe User's basic checklist. We need to go out and do takeoffs, climbs, approaches, landings, go-arounds. Uh, it kind of has the ACS syllabus there, uh, a place for me to sign down at the bottom that, yeah, I did do all that information or, or do, do all that training. Uh, and then it has a couple of other flight activities for me to do. So rather lengthy checklist that I could print out as an instructor if I wanted to go out and do someone's uh, wings activities. Now, the nice thing is if I could complete all of those activities on one flight and they've completed uh, their knowledge activities already, then at the end of the day, they would get credit for a flight review without me having to sign them off as a flight review. Wings is automatically going to do that. So um, that's that's a benefit, too. If, if you wanted to give somebody a flight review, I would recommend doing it through Wings because it's, it's a little more formal way of documenting that. Uh, and I think it gives them a little more uh, knowledge activity instead of just doing the one-hour ground that's required by the FARs. Anyway, that is a quick rundown. I say quick. It's been about 25 minutes on how to use the Wings website. I hope you found it helpful. Um, always reach out to your local FPM and fast team member first uh, because you need to get involved with them anyway. But if you can't get your answer there, feel free to reach out to me at seth at vsl.aero. I'd be happy to answer your questions. You can leave them in the comments below if you happen to find us here on YouTube. Uh, and thanks for watching.